What's up, everybody? Your boy Melv here for another scary story time. This time be quick because I have a lot of things to do, so it'll be only two stories for today. So today's two story will be from the books of Alan Schwartz. More specifically, one will be from the second one. More scary stories to tell in the dark. I don't know what the other one's gonna be, but hey, it'll be a real treat. So before we begin, remember to subscribe, hit the bell. So we have some great time, shall we? So let's begin. So the story of today is Rings on Her Finger by Alvin Schwartz from the book More Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Daisy Clark had been in a coma for more than a month. When the doctor said that she had finally died, she was buried on a cool summer day in a, in a small cemetery about a mile from her home. May she always rest in peace, her husband said, but she didn't. Late that night, a grave robber with a shovel and a lantern began to dig up her grave. Since the ground was still soft, he quickly reached the coffin and got it open. His hunch was right. Daisy had been buried wearing two valuable rings, a wedding ring with a diamond in it, a ring with a ruby that glowed as if it were alive. The thief got down on his he, on his hands and knees and reached into the coffin to get the rings, but they were stuck so fast, stuck fast on her fingers. So he decided that the only way to get them off was to cut off her fingers with a knife. But when he cut into the fingers with the wedding ring it began to bleed and daisy clark began to steer suddenly she sat up terrified the feet scrambled to his feet he accidentally kicked over the lantern and the light went out he could hear daisy climb out of her grave as she moved past him in the dark he stood there frozen with fear clutching the knife in his hand when daisy saw him she pulled her shroud around her and asked, Who are you? When the grave robber heard the court speak, he ran. Daisy shrugged in her, sh her shoulders and walked on. And never once looked back. But in his fear and confusion, the thief fled in the wrong direction. His pitch headlong into her grave, fell on, an, fell on the knife and stabbed himself while Daisy walked home. The thief bled to death. Wow. That's... I think it has been taking place back in the early 19th century because, face it, people fear death and they don't understand what... between a coma or... how long a person's been in a coma. So, hey, she's lucky. She didn't walk up inside her grave and clawed her way out. Ouch. But yeah, that was a good story, wasn't it? But yeah, our next story is a classic from Scary Stories 3... A title which we all love to hear. A certain name. Harold. Jack has a little pasture in the mountains to graze. Usually they stay there with the cows for two or months. Then he said. It will be fun to make and we could put it in the garden to scare away the birds. It should look like Harold. Alfred said, uh, Harold was a farmer they both hated. They made the doll out of old sex and Harold's name. Each morning on their way to the pasture, they tied Harold to a pole in the garden to scare away the birds. Each night they brought him inside so they wouldn't, he wouldn't get ruined if it rained. When they were feeding Feeling playful, they would talk to him. One of them might say, How are the vegetables growing today, Harold? Then the other, make, making believe he was Harold, would answer in a crazy voice, Very slowly. They both would laugh, but not Harold. Whenever something went wrong, they took it out on Harold. They would curse at him, even kick him or punch him. Sometimes one of them would take the food they were eating, which they both were sick of, and smear it on the doll's face. How do you like that stew, Harold? 
he would he would ask, "Well, you better eat it, or else." Then the two men would howl it with laughter. One night, after Thomas had wiped Harold's face with food, Harold grunted. "Did you hear that?" Alfred asked. "It was Harold," Thomas said. "I was watching him when it happened. I can't believe it. How could he grunt?" Alfred asked. He just a sack of straw. It's not possible. Let's throw him in the fire, said Thomas. And that will be a that. Let's do not do anything stupid, said Alfred. We don't know what's going on. When we move the cows down, we'll leave him behind. For now, let's just keep an eye on him. So they left Harold sitting in a corner of the hut. They didn't talk to him or take him outside anymore. Now and then the doll grunted, but that was all. After all few days, they decided there was nothing to be afraid of. Maybe a mouse or some insect got inside a parrot. Sorry. And were making those sounds. So Thomas and Alfred went back to their old ways. Each morning, they put Harold out of the garden. Each night, they brought him back into the hut. When they felt playful, they joked with him. When they felt me, they treated him as badly as ever. Then one night, Alfred noticed something that frightened him. Harold is growling, he said. I was thinking the same thing, Thomas said. Maybe it's just our imagination, Alfred replied. We have been up here on this mountain too long. The next morning, while they were eating, Harold stood up, walked out of the hut. He climbed up on the roof and trotted back and forth like a horse on its hind legs. All day, all night, he trotted like that. In the morning, Harold climbed down and stood in a far corner of the pasture. The men had no idea what he would do next. They were afraid. They decided to take the cow down into the valley that same day. When they left, Harold was nowhere in sight. They felt as if they had escaped a great danger and began joking and singing. But when they had gone only a mile or two, they realized they had forgotten to bring the milk in stools. Neither one of them wanted to go back for them, but the stools would cost a lot to replace. There really is nothing to be afraid of, they told one another. After all, what could a doll do? They drew straws to see which one would go back. It was Thomas. I'll catch up with you, he said, and Alfred walked on toward the valley. When Alfred came to a rise in the path, he looked back for Thomas. He did not see him anywhere, but he did see Harold. The doll was on the roof of the hut again as Alfred watched Harold need and stretch out a bloody skin to dry in the sun. <laughs> well, looks like Harold got himself a good catch. A farmer's a skin after being treated disrespectfully. So remember, if you work at the farm, treat a scarecrow with nice. If you don't, you end up like poor Thomas. Skinned to a bloody fin. But yeah, that'll be it for today. And then if you want to hear more, yeah, wait until next week. But until then, if you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe, hit the bell, like this video. And I'll see you next time for our daily reviews. This time will be the episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark? So, I'm hoping you'll look forward to it. See ya.